my name is Tanya McMillan and I'm a breast cancer survivor. I wanted to talk with you guys today about my breast reconstruction journey. Um, for me, it began at the time of mastectomy. Um, I had a double mastectomy or a bilateral mastectomy and this is my son, Riley. Let me just say this real quick. Sit up, Riley, and say hello. Hello. That's my son, Riley. He's five years old. He's being a little sad right now because he has to run his bath water. So, I'm sorry. Um, again, I had a bilateral mastectomy. And at the time of the mastectomy, my plastic surgeon placed tissue expanders behind the muscle. And he did that so that way my skin could stay um, or remain pliable or stretched through my radiation, which was also a part of my treatment. So at the time of the bilateral mastectomy, my plastic surgeon placed the tissue expanders behind the muscle. And I would go to his office like every week and he would inject saline into those tissue expanders. Once we got to the desired size, a size that we we're both happy with, I started my radiation. In the process of me researching breast reconstruction, I learned that one in three reconstructions fail when the patient has had radiation and the reconstruction of choice is breast implants. Well, I was one of those patients that was going to have radiation and my reconstruction of choice was breast implants. So I started to notice after the radiation therapy was over that the skin around the breast implant had started to contract. And so it was balling up. The skin was getting smaller. And so it was like the tissue expander was getting smaller too. Um, and I met this doctor about a month before I was scheduled to go in and have my implant exchange surgery. Implant exchange surgery is when they remove the tissue expanders and put in your permanent implants or the implants that you'll have for some years. So about a month before I was scheduled to have that surgery done, I met this incredible surgeon who asked me had I ever considered using my own tissues for reconstruction. Well, the answer was no, but it was only no because I never knew that I was a candidate for that type of reconstruction. Um, I'm a tall woman. I stand about 5'11", and I was definitely on the thinner side. So I didn't think I had enough tissue to reconstruct a breast. And so maybe that was why it was never offered to me. But one of the things that I definitely found appealing about that type of surgery is the fact that I would then be able or I would then be a candidate for nipple reconstruction. Um, the type of mastectomy I had did remove both of my nipples and areola as well as breast tissue. And because I had radiation, I was told by my doctor at the time that I was not a candidate for nipple and areola reconstruction on the side that had been radiated. Because radiation compromises the tissue to a degree that makes it harder for those types of um, nipple reconstructions to actually be sustainable and to be successful. So for me, that was a, that was a bummer to be honest with you, you know, to keep it real, that was a bummer for me because I wanted the areolas in the nipple reconstruction and I was looking online and I was messaging people and different doctors and asking them if it was possible and no one could really seem to answer the question like with a definite yes or a definite no. So... Even though I was going to have the, the breast implant reconstruction, I was never really quite 100% comfortable with it because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to have the nipples and areolas reconstructed. So lo and behold, I meet this wonderful doctor who does the deep flap um, reconstruction. And he asked me had I ever considered it. 
again I told him no you know I didn't know that I was a candidate for it and so I went in for a consultation I met him on a Thursday night went in that following Monday for a consultation and he said that I would be a candidate for it and in fact that he would recommend it because he could see that I was already starting to have the um, capsular contracture on the radiated side so one of the benefits of the deep flap surgery is that they also reconnect um, blood vessels in the breast area so because there's now blood in human tissue underneath that radiated skin it started to heal the radiated skin this time last year my skin was probably five shades darker than it is now on this side and if I go like this I don't know if you can see but I kind of have a little bit see right here where this color goes it's a little bit darker but when I tell y'all it was like five shades darker this time last year because of the radiation well because of course time helps to heal that but also because I've had the um, the blood vessels um, reconnected in this area it's feeding that radiated tissue so my skin is beginning to be more soft and more pliable and it's beginning to get its elasticity back in that area and it's softening up and it really feels you know feels really good compared to the way it felt last year cut your bath water off son <laughs> so after um, so I ended up doing the deep flap surgery and the deep flap is a process where they actually remove skin and tissue from the abdomen area from the belly button down and they move that tissue as well as some of that skin and those blood vessels up to the breast area so it's like replacing your old breast tissue with tissue from your tummy genius right so that's what I did and it was the recovery for that surgery was pretty difficult I'm not even gonna lie to you it's pretty difficult if you're considering having that type of surgery definitely have a support team um, definitely have people that are willing to help you cook and take care of your little ones if you have them because you just can't move around a whole bunch you know you don't really realize how much you use those muscles in your abs unintentionally you know just every day and day-to-day -day things like getting off the the sofa I you use your ab drain. muscles or you use your arms mommy i forgot the drain okay did you put the drain in the tub i forgot go put it in there babe water's been running for like seven minutes no drain in the tub <laughs> You just gotta laugh, right? So, anyways, I had the tissue from my stomach moved up to my abdomen. And, you know, as they began to settle, they looked really good, y'all. They were, you know, nice shape. Um, they're very warm and very real to the touch. You know, they move and feel like real breasts. Um, but for me, they I still didn't have the projection that I wanted. So I talked to my doctor about it, and we What's still ended up putting a small um, implant behind my deep flaps just for projection. So I think I have like 230 cc's in each breast, and so now I am probably a, um, a, a D cup, you know. Um, and it's nice. I like them. I love the shape of them, and uh, everything wasn't... The thing about the deep flap surgery, too, that you guys need to understand is that it's not just one and done, like implants could be. Deep flap happens in phases. So the first phase was actually moving the tissue from my abdomen up to my stomach. The second phase for me was adding a small implant, and then they do scar revision, where he goes in and actually lowers the abdominal scar, because initially it was kind of pretty high up. And so he lowers it down to your pubic area. Um, where it looks more like a tummy tuck because they cut you from hip to hip. So in some ways it kind of, I mean, you do lose breast tissue. I mean, 
tummy tissue, but it's definitely not a tummy tuck. It's not a tummy tuck by any means. But they do do a little bit of liposuction to kind of um, shape out the area, as well as um, he did fat grafting. So the fat that he removed from my abdomen area, he put in my breast area to kind of fill in any little hollows that I may have had. So... You know, it's it's definitely a process. It's a process, and I am scheduled to go back for um, what well, would actually be my phase four because I had a phase three. Phase three was um, what they call a, t a Tdap flap. And so with a Tdap, TDAP flap, he took tissue from under my arm here, and he wrapped it around this outer part of my breast. And the reason he did that is because in the lymph node removal from the initial mastectomy, it kind of left me kind of hollow under there. So that tissue just kind of helps to fill that in a little bit more and make more of a full breast. So that was phase three for me. So the next phase for me will be nipple and areola reconstruction. I'm really, really excited about that, you guys. And um, just oh, I'm so excited about that. It's going to kind of be the cherry on top. And then I'll get my 3D tattoos to make them look even more natural. So I'm really excited. You know, it's it's been a long process. It's been multiple steps. But by the grace of God, I haven't had any setbacks or anything like that. Everything has um, healed nicely. And I will say this for you all. You know, definitely you have to continue to advocate for yourself just as you do through your breast cancer treatment. You have to advocate through your, for yourself through your breast reconstruction journey okay only you are gonna know what you're comfortable with only you are gonna know when you're ready to stop when you're ready to say enough is enough or that's good enough okay and there's nothing wrong with it taking multiple times for it to happen no one can tell you when you've had enough surgery no one can tell you that you don't need any more it has to be your your decision and your choice and I mean after all that we've been through the least we can do is get some breasts that we're happy with in the end, you know? So to each its own, but I just want to encourage you guys all that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and this does not have to steal your joy. It does not have to steal your joy. It does not have to steal your confidence. It does not have to steal your sexy. It does not have to steal your attractiveness at all, okay? So... Again, continue to advocate for yourself. Be strong. Be strong. You are strong. You'll get through this, and you'll be happy in the end. Thank you.